Well, thank you, everybody. Let me, let me begin by doing this. All right, I've always wanted to do that ever since my elementary school teacher did that to me, and I always wanted to steal that bell. But anyway, I want to say thank you all for coming to City Hall today on this announcement of an effort to help uh, our school district continue to be the best urban school district, not in California, but in the country. And uh, one way to do it is to make sure that we respond to their needs while we face a housing crisis in the city. And as all of you know, uh, we do have a housing crisis, and it's been decades in the making. And I uh, wanted to make sure that uh, as we commit to building new housing, rehabilitating housing, preserving our neighborhoods and preserving as much housing and preventing people from getting evicted, that we also pay attention to what has been more and more described as the essential workforce of this city. Uh, we have in the past talked about the need to make sure our first responders are in the city and so we started uh, a specified loan program and uh, thanks to the supervisors working with my office, we were able to do that to the tune of about $250 million. And I believe supervisors, that whole program is pretty much taken care of. Uh, and we need more probably in the future. But it's a mark of our effort to make sure our essential workforce is here. Um, as you also know, I've articulated the, the need to build and rehab 30,000 units of housing by 2020. Uh, and making sure that a third of that is affordable to low income, but half of it, over half, will be affordable to middle income families as well. Uh, we are rebuilding our public housing, as uh, we noted last week with the HUD Secretary Castro that are in town, and uh, we uh, declared and announced our blueprint as to how we're gonna get to ensuring over 10,000 of the 30,000 units are permanently affordable and uh, as you know, we have recently introduced, uh, with the board's cooperation, uh, several pieces of legislation that can accelerate uh, the building and the rehabbing of this housing faster. I'm also making sure that longtime San Francisco residents can stay and maintain their residences here in the city. And so we have funded programs that strengthen eviction protections and using our small sites program to also preserve and build more housing. Uh, all of us unanimously have sent uh, to the voters uh, the uh, $310 million uh, housing bond that will not raise property taxes, but will certainly be of great help uh, in areas like the Mission District uh, that need uh, more affordable housing and also need to have the neighborhood stabilized. And speaking of the middle class, it brings me to uh, today's announcement, and I'm very happy to be joined by so many of our supervisors and our school superintendent, uh, United Educators, uh, as well as a, a one of our teachers, uh, so that we're uh, also making sure that we pay attention to a great part of our essential workforce, and that is those who teach in our uh, public schools. Uh, today, we know that about 70% of our public school teachers live in the city. But we also know that the housing crisis means that number could change dramatically very quickly. And uh, we're not satisfied with 70%. If we can make that higher, that will mean that uh, teachers will have more reasons to sacrifice uh, the time, the expense it is to be here. But also, to be a world-class school system, you've got to have teachers willing to spend a lot of time after school, before school parental engagement, in engaging with our students and with their families. This is what makes a world-class school system world-class. And so our housing challenges for our teachers also mean that we will meet the retention challenges for our school district and therefore ultimately the challenges that face our students. That's why I made teacher housing a priority in my administration and integral part of the housing working group discussions that have gone on that have included everybody uh, that is standing beside me and so many others. As I said earlier, I've been working very closely with Superintendent Carranza and members of the school board and the school district is here today as well. Our elected officials from our school district are here as well to join in this 
new announcement that is a joint effort between the Mayor's Office of Housing and the San Francisco School District to provide affordable housing for at least 500 teachers by the year 2020. And we will use programs and refund and resource programs like a very successful tech, uh, Teachers Next Door program. Uh, it's been so successful that as of today it has zero money in it. And we can renew that uh, uh, with some 200 uh, what we call forgivable loans. I like that term, forgivable loans. Get me one of those. Uh, <laughs> Uh, they provide uh, down payment assistance to our teachers so they can buy a home and continue to teach and live in the city. Our school district and our office will jointly finance a housing development for at least 100 educator, house educator households. We will provide rental assistance for at least 100 educators and we will provide at least $250,000 of housing navigation counseling, if you will, to over 100 education households within the next five years. All four of these programs are important because we've heard in our discussions with teachers, with their representatives, that uh, not unlike the housing challenges in our city, the challenges for our teachers are just as varied stabilizing, rental assistance, opportunities to buy a home through a down payment assistance program, as well as counseling, all of that is important to keep as many teachers here as possible. And we believe that with all of these programs, uh, in the funded manner in which we uh, are planning to do so, and also in the strategies uh, that we have discussed, uh, that it will allow at least 500 teachers to four additional 500 teachers afford to be here in San Francisco through 2020. Supervisor Carranza and I have agreed on the strategies to achieve this goal. We have talked through it and we've agreed on this and we know that this will make a huge difference. And while there are programs already in San Francisco that help people find and attain affordable housing, middle class earners like our teachers do not always qualify for them and that's why I'm focused particularly on teachers today. And today we have with us a teacher who has luckily accessed one of our existing city housing programs to purchase her own home. She's a relatively new teacher at James Lick Middle School, but so lucky because she recently won our housing lottery. So you have to win a lottery in order to get a house in San Francisco. Well, I, I wanted to just congratulate Lindsay Donnellan, uh, our middle school teacher, Go Bulldogs, as uh, she's going to, uh, in a minute, come up here and talk about her experience uh, being a teacher uh, in our school district. Lindsay did and was able to access our below market rate housing program and, uh, as I said, won the lottery to purchase her own home at 1400 Mission Street. And we're going to create more housing opportunities for our teachers so they can live where they teach. That's important to us. As I said earlier, I think that if we have teachers who live here, you're gonna have their time before and after school, you're gonna have a lot more parental engagement, and these are things that are foundations of really great school systems. Uh, before she speaks, I just wanna come up and uh, have come up our superintendent of public schools, uh, and I wanna congratulate again uh, Superintendent Carranza and the school district, because uh, just last night we received word that uh, the, uh, the state's uh, California School Board Association has awarded our school district uh, what they call the Golden Bell Award, which is, uh, I think, a fantastic achievement. I think we're, uh, we, we again are the best performing large urban school in the state of California, and it was again recognized by the School Board Association. So I want to congratulate the superintendent and the entire school board and the staff for all the work that they're doing as our president, London Breed, walks into the room. <laughs> so with that, uh, Superintendent Rich Carranza. So we're in session. So thank you, Mr. Mayor. As always, we appreciate your commitment to the issue of housing for all of our 
professionals in the district. I'm very, very excited to be here this morning with the mayor, with uh, the executive vice president of United Educators, Susan Solomon, who is also here, and our board of education commissioners, uh, Hydra Mendoza McDonald, and our vice president, Matt Haney, as well as all of the supervisors uh, of the board of, of supervisors. We are committed to the notion that you cannot have a world-class city without a world-class public education system. And if we look at who does the work of educating our children every single day, who is the person that will wipe the tears from a student who's having a bad day? Who greets that child when they walk into school? Who helps them learn to read and write? But not only read and write, read and write for a purpose to express themselves. It's our teachers, it's our paraprofessionals, it's our administrators. And I still remember about 25 years ago as a new teacher, living and working in the community in which I taught and having those conversations at the grocery store with somebody's grandmother or having those conversations as I was cutting my grass in the front and kids would walk by and we would talk about, so how did that homework assignment go? Or did you do the extra credit? But living and working in the community in which you teach and you make this investment is incredibly important for the fabric of a city. So to have our mayor and our elected officials also link arms with us around this notion that we want to create in a world-class city like San Francisco, the opportunity for our educators to live and work in San Francisco is incredibly important to us and is a priority of the district and the Board of Education. We are very, very proud that we have been working now for uh, well over 16 months hand in hand with our teachers union, exploring really a four point process. We want to provide uh, brick and mortar opportunities, building a building where, and the mayor has spoken of this, where our, our educators can live. But we also want to explore rental subsidies. We're also exploring mortgage assistance and then the program, the Teacher Next Door program that the mayor has spoken about as well. So we're not putting all of our eggs in one basket, if you will. What we're doing is exploring a wide variety of opportunities that will create an infrastructure so that not only do we continue to recruit and develop the best educators for our children in San Francisco, but we give them a mechanism by which they can live and work in San Francisco and stay in San Francisco to create the next generation of innovators, the next generation of leaders, and the next generation of, who knows, superintendents here in San Francisco. So that's incredibly important to us, but it really is a matter of keeping our folks in the city. Uh, so we're very excited to partner with the Office of the Mayor, with the Board of Supervisors, and the Board of Education and I are absolutely committed to working with our teachers union at making these opportunities a reality. But enough for me. I think you should hear from uh, somebody who is one of those educators, and we're so lucky to have her. So Mr. Mayor, would you introduce her? Yeah, we'll have the mayor introduce her because she deserves to be introduced by the mayor. So thank you for being here. Well, thank you, Superintendent. Well, simply, uh, Lindsay Donnelly uh, is a speech and language arts uh, language teacher. Excuse me, because I, I used to call it language arts when I was going to <laughs> middle school. Uh, and she's at the James Lick Middle School, but I want, we wanted her here to just talk about uh, the challenges that teachers have, but also her own experience. So, Lindsay, please come on up and thank you again for joining us. So, as uh, Mary Lee said, I, my name is Lindsay Donnellan, and I am a speech language pathologist for the district. I work at James Lick Middle School and at Willie Brown Middle School as well. Um, and I'm here to just tell you a little bit about my process uh, purchasing a home at 1400 Mission. Um, so I was hired by the district a couple years ago, and I was really excited. It was my dream job. Um, however, when I moved here, I was really surprised how expensive rent was, and I really just didn't think it was something that I'd be able to do in the long run. So at the end of last school year, I kind of made the decision to either move away to someplace that's more affordable or look into other options to stay in the city. And that's how I uh, found out about the below market rate housing opportunity. Um, so I did some research online, went to a couple classes for, um, through the, I think the credit counseling agency, and they gave me information about um, how to purchase a home, how to take out a loan, and then they gave me a counselor one-on-one -on -one who 
brought me through the process, convinced me to apply for 1400 mission. I sent in my application, got approved for a loan, and then I found out a couple months later I actually won the lottery, um, which is really great news. Um, and now I can stay in the city. Um, the whole process was really great. I'm really thankful that this program exists, um, or else I probably would have had to leave the city, and even though I really love my job, love working with my students. So I'm very thankful for this opportunity. Um, and I'm really glad to hear that this program is expanding for more teachers so other people can also, um, so other, my colleagues can stay in the city as well and um, live in the community in which they uh, serve. Um, again, I'd just like to thank everyone for the opportunity to purchase my first home and I'm really, really grateful for it. Well, as, as great as that story is, Lindsay, we, we hope that uh, other teachers won't have to wait to win a lottery yes. uh, because that's kind of hard to do because when you're faced with being one of maybe five to 10,000 people going for one of these lottery tickets. By the way, Lindsay, do you have other lottery tickets that I can help ask you to uh, <laughs> purchase for me? Uh, I've been lucky to work uh, with a great uh, body of uh, people on our uh, our Board of Supervisors, and uh, particularly when it comes to the topic of education and housing, uh, we've been uh, strong allies uh, in, uh, again, a crisis that's been decades in the making, and uh, I want to just personally thank uh, President Breed, Supervisor Christensen, Supervisor Farrell, uh, Supervisor Malia Cohn, and Supervisor Katie Tang, all of them and each of them have been so strong in their efforts to work with me and uh, every meeting we have, uh, they are all talking about housing, particularly our board president, as uh, I know it's very near and dear to her and uh, we've been together with the HUD secretary, with Leader Pelosi, with uh, the housing issues, not only in her community but in all the communities in our city and uh, want to come up and say a few words, uh, board president London Breed. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Many of you probably don't know this or would never believe this, but I was really a bad kid in school. <laughs> I went to public schools here in San Francisco, and there was always this one special teacher every year that was able to just draw me in and in some ways keep me under control. In high school, that teacher was Madame Swartzak, my French teacher, moi je parle un peu français. And I remember when the 89 earthquake happened and um, a couple of days later, I mean, of course, the next day I was excited because we didn't have to go to school. But a couple of days later when I returned to school, Galileo High School, the best high school in San Francisco, um, Madame was not there. And I almost lost it because, of course, I wanted to talk to her about it. Of course, our class, I mean, she was so amazing. She would make her class available to all of us, even during lunchtime when we had no place else to go or maybe no one to talk to. And she couldn't make it to work. The bridge was broken. As you know, it fell down, and many people had to commute around through the Golden Gate Bridge, and it was really challenging. But it was really, really sad not to have my teacher not make it to work, but more importantly, I didn't understand why at that time, and this is in 89, I didn't understand why she couldn't live in a great place like San Francisco. This housing and providing this housing opportunity for our teachers is one of the most important things that we can do as a city. They deserve this. They're educating and dealing with challenging children every single day. I understand I mean, I actually hope that they would accept my apology today for all the trouble I gave them and know that the fact that they continue to work with me, the fact that they continue to work with our children every day, the fact that they continue to show up. I mean, because I got to tell you, you got to love what you do in order to wake up every morning and deal with a lot of children all the time. There's a love affair with that. And why wouldn't our teachers deserve an opportunity to live in this great city? As we build all of this affordable housing and we say, hey, San Francisco is a place for you. It has to be a place for them too. So I'm really happy that the mayor and the board were working together with the school district to make this possible. This is gonna be an incredible opportunity for our teachers and I'm truly looking forward to it. Thank you.
Thank you, President Breed. And uh, another supervisor who has been uh, a great leader, but also one that's very committed to our children and families, and one that I've uh, really come to know uh, during the last year of her performance, and that supervisor, Julie Christensen of District 3. This announcement means a lot to me. Um, I became a neighborhood advocate 20 years ago, largely to try to make our neighborhoods a safer and better place to raise our families. Essential to that are our schools, and key to that are our wonderful, inspiring, transformative teachers. As a supervisor, I've tried to work hard to close the gap between recognizing needs and problems and actually finding workable, practical solutions to them. It's terrific that the mayor and the Unified School District and the board can come together to provide housing accessibility and to improve affordability for one of the most fundamental parts of a great city, and that's our teachers. It is one step that we need to take out of many to try to keep our city a place that's affordable and accessible for everyone. I think all of us, uh, like President Breed, have known teachers who have changed and shaped our lives. Our teachers are important not only to our schools, but to our communities at large. And I know all of us here want to do everything that we can to keep them in our neighborhoods. So thank you to all who have made this happen, and I know we're all committed to doing more going forward. Thank you. Well, I know that if I kept this uh, conference going, that each of the supervisors would take the opportunity to apologize to all the teachers they abused, uh, but we don't have that much time. I don't have to apologize, I was a good student. Uh, I did want to give you some economics, because I know that will be part of your inquiries. So let me tell you how serious this is for us by way of budget. I think the teacher housing development will estimate to be somewhere around a $35 million development. And we're glad to do it with our school district, because they're worth it. And I want to continue saying that, because I don't want them to get into an expertise that they're not good at, which is land use and housing. We're good at that but we want to be your partners, and this is a 35, at least a $35 million commitment right there. The Teacher Next Door program, uh, with the hope of the passage of Proposition A, we will commit at least $4 million to that program. The Down Payment Assistance Program is a $40 million revolving housing trust fund program, along with funds from Prop A, and a rental assistance program uh, will be with the school district, and that uh, funds up to about $2 million annually. So all totaled, you're talking about an estimated $80 million uh, on an on a ongoing basis for all these programs. And I just want to put that number in your head because that reflects how serious we are in supporting our teachers, housing, their stability, but most importantly, keeping an education system that's world class. Thanks for being here, and everybody up here will be available for one-on-one -on -one interviews. Thank you.